Hello, welcome to Claret and Blue. My name's Dan Rowan. I'm joined at Hockley Social Club by John Townley this afternoon. John, how are you? You all right? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Um, I'm here with headphones in today because the last time we came here, we lost loads of our files nightmare. due to audio problems, yeah. which well, yeah, was a nightmare. So I'm listening along, so if anything bad happens, we can fix it. We're here today to talk about <laughs> Aston Villa's route to European football, if they can reach it. It's going to be a big ask now, as we know and as we've talked about. We'll look at the permutations, who plays who. There's two games left for Villa, Spurs and Brentford, who are just about in it if they win both games. And Brighton have got four games to go. I've got the notes in front of me here. Last time we did this, I think it was six games to go for Villa just before the Fulham game. And I think Brighton had nine games left and Man United had seven or whatever. Yeah, I've said I've gone up to be Champions League now as we expected. So this is Brighton, Spurs and Villa, really. Obviously, we'll get to Villa in a sec. I've put Brentford in there because they're on 53 points. So if they win both, they can get 59. You know, us and Spurs are only on 57 at the moment. So Brentford's games are Spurs away, which obviously is a big one for Villa. And then Man City at home on the final day, which sounds bad. But if they've won the title by then, you never know. <laughs> yeah. So Brighton are sixth currently, Spurs seventh, Villa eighth, um, only on goal difference, obviously after beating Spurs at the weekend. And then Brentford ninth, Villa, Liverpool away, and then Brighton at home. Now, we've got Liverpool away this weekend. This video will be coming out, obviously, before then. Leicester play Liverpool tonight. So, I expect Liverpool to win, to be honest, unless Dean Smith can do us a favour. Liverpool and, Sp- and Brighton. Before we get into like the nitty-gritty of it, how many points are there, do you think? I can't see us winning at Anfield. I think we can get draw if we play very well, because Liverpool at home are just a different animal. And their form has been really good over the last couple of months. I think Trent moving into midfield has changed them quite dramatically. But then if you look at it, they've won maybe six or seven games in a row, I think. Are they going to then win their next... How many games have got? Three games left? Yeah. Are they then going to win the next... So you look at it and think, well, Villa, for them, at home, is probably their hardest game. It's sort of the law of averages, would they win every game? Possibly not. And if they're going to stumble, it would probably be against Villa. But, yeah, I, I think for us, obviously, Brighton at home is a must-win. There's no other... There's no other way around that. So I'd say four points is sort of the max. We, I mean, it's not the max. Of course, we could beat Liverpool, but I think it's just unlikely, especially with what Liverpool are playing for. Um, United have stumbled. Newcastle seem to have stumbled as well. They seem to have enough points at this stage to still get over the line, but Liverpool will want to be in a position where if they were to... Um, you know, fall on the last day. For example, United play Fulham at home and Fulham are going to want to do one on United after that FA Cup game. Liverpool will want to be in a position where they can capitalise and beating Villa for them is a must. So <clears throat> that will be a really difficult game. The only as we'll, thing that we'll get on to is that Brentford play Tottenham before we play Liverpool, which I think again might have a psychological sort of um, effect, should we say. I think if Tottenham beat Brentford, that could work one of two ways for us. Either we'll be then more motivated to get something against Liverpool or will we then think, oh, this is just a, a sort of a, Whatever we a do, challenge we still too can't. far? Yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. So Spurs played 36, 57 points plus six goal difference. Villa played 36, 57 points plus four goal difference. Now Harry Kane's cheating penalty might have made a difference there uh, and could prove to be uh, something that comes down to the final day. Brighton played 34, 58 points plus 21 goal difference. So if you're talking about who deserves European football, you would say Brighton have, have been exceptional this season and whoever finishes in that top seven deserves to over the course of a season. Yeah. It's just a damn shame that we were, gave Spurs about a 14 point head start I think it was but when yeah. Gerard was sacked I think Villa had 9 points and Spurs had 23 so the fact that we're even level and having this conversation on what May the 15th is incredible in itself and however the season ends now yes we might be a little bit deflated that we can't get over the line considering we were what 5th at one point a couple of weeks ago yeah. but that was almost a bit of a false position, I guess, with, yeah, the, with the games in hand that, and, yeah. and, and stuff like that. So it's still been a great, great season. I said on the post-match show that we did after Spurs that do I think we'll go to Liverpool and win? Not necessarily, but I believe we can win. And, and that's a position I'm, I'm proud that Aston Villa have got themselves into that I don't look at any game now and go, oh, Anfield, oh, write that off. I still think that there's a possibility that you could go there and get maximum points, as, as mad as that sounds. Um but you know, strange things do happen at this stage of the season. So I would probably say Villa will do very well to get four points from those three. And we're almost kind of guaranteeing that oh, we'll beat Brighton on yeah, the last day. It's, That's it's, not, it's not a gimme, but no. if Villa think we've got a win to, to stand a chance, I would back them to do and that. I think Brighton will probably have nothing to say, nothing to play for. <laughs> They'll still want to win the game, but I'd have thought that sixth position would probably be locked for them. If anything, they'd be challenging for fifth, where Liverpool are, if we get anything against Liverpool. So, yeah. But they'll have Europa League sewn up by the time we play them, I'm sure. Yeah, so Spurs then. 
Brentford at home next uh, this weekend when we play Liverpool. That's a 12.30 kick-off, which, like, like you say, has got some kind of potential psychological impact that we'll know that they've dropped points or, or picked up points before we even kick off. You'd still like to think Villa will focus on their own job, but as a player, I don't know whether they'll be privy to the scoreline before they start, but if I did know it, I'd be thinking, oh, they've lost, like I'm well up for this or, or whatever. And then final day, leads away, which, again, like we said before, no game for any team is an easy one at this stage. Um if Leeds need to win to survive in the Premier League, I'm not sure I'd back them to do it, but the way Spurs are and, and the, the Ellen Road ha- atmosphere, again, it's possible that, let's say we lose against Liverpool and Spurs beat Brentford and we think, oh, it's over. It's it's still a possibility that Spurs lose on the final day to Leeds and we beat Brighton and it does come down to goal difference. Yeah. It's possible. Go- I mean, that, that I think is a big possibility. I think, I think you know, obviously Tottenham can beat Brentford. Brentford equally could get something at Spurs. But on the last day, I would back Leeds to beat Tottenham and I've said that for a few weeks because Leeds you would presume would have to win that game to stand a chance of staying up um, they're going to have to rely on other results if they don't beat West Ham so I mean it could be event could be the event that Leeds have beaten West Ham and all of a sudden they're above Everton because Everton haven't won at Molyneux which would then mean that if Leeds beat Tottenham they're up no matter what Everton do so again it could work in either way but that last game I'm confident that Leeds would be able to beat Tottenham so if we go into the last game against Brighton knowing that if we do our job, then there's a like you know a big chance that we'd be able to get top seven. Then great, but I just think it's all on this weekend where we need Brentford for me to get something against Tottenham. Which, which in ter- context of, of the league, say Brentford beat Spurs this weekend, and we're going, oh Spurs have dropped points. That's good for us. Brentford would only be a point behind Villa and Spurs going into the final day. Say if we lose against Liverpool, it'd be Brentford fifty six, Villa fifty seven, Spurs fifty seven. But you, well, that's, but, a, that's a but, mad end. But that season. last game against Brighton, if we don't win that, I don't care who gets you. Do you know? What I mean? It's <laughs> we, we've, we're, we're playing the narrative that we win against Brighton. That yeah, you yeah. know, and I th- again, I think we will if Brighton have got their position sewn up, which they should have, because they only need Brighton need two points from their next three against. We'll go on to it: Man City, Arsenal, Southampton. They'll beat Southampton. So there's your two points. Well, Southampton are down points. now. You see sometimes that a club that get relegated their next game, they, they pull something out of the bag. Wait, that, that Everton game against Brighton was the one that gave me now clearly <laughs> false hope that Brighton wouldn't pick up another or yeah, wouldn't know, pick I've up got, more than a point. I've got WhatsApp evidence of you going, Arsenal, Newcastle, Man City, they'll only get one point from there. I text us not going, cheers that. And respect, respect to Brighton. Like, they've been incredible all season, but I don't think I was stupid to think that they wouldn't have picked up more than one point from... City at home, Arsenal away, and Newcastle away. I think getting a point out of that would have been a decent return, to be honest. Because yeah. obviously they were going to beat Southampton as well. So I thought four points out of that four. And then we beat them. And then we beat them, and then Pippen by point or whatever it was. So, yeah, that ain't going to happen now. Um, but Tottenham, it's, it's a two-horse race, isn't it? So. Yeah, yeah. These, this podcast, I'm going to keep it pretty short because it's a lot of if this happens and if that happens, and yeah. that, that's the nature of football predictions. And we're doing this as a bit of fun, really. It's not, you know, it's not got any bearing on whatever happens in the season. I think four points is, would be a great end of the season for Villa to, to break the 60 point mark as a target, wherever that, whatever that yeah, does. Good point. That's a great achievement. Yeah. I saw that we'd, you know, as of now. 57 points We're, this is our highest point start since return to the Premier League 35 then it was 55 wasn't it under Smith was it that much under Smith 55 was 11th place that, that year which is which is crazy wow. isn't it um, I think we got that many I'm pretty sure Gerard was 45 last the full last season and this season obviously at least 57 mm. hopefully you know to break 60 will be a kind of nice achievement whether it means Europe or not but it's guaranteed a top 10 finish which even if you'd have told us that back in yeah, the, the, that the was, night you were at Craven Cottage, you'd have yeah. gone, oh, top 10, no chance. That was almost, i say, glossed over because now we're trying to get Europe, but we secured that with the win over Tottenham. There was almost no sort of... Um, Fanfare. Yeah, or celebration about it, but that, we've been saying that for years, that, oh, we need to just finish top 10 because we haven't done it since, is it 2010, 2011? 2011, I think. 2011. Um, yeah, 2011. Finished ninth that year, which again, even if we finish eighth, that'll be a disappointment because it's not Europe, but it'd be our best season the highest since, finish since, uh, since O'Neill. Since O'Neill, yeah. Um, but obviously it's just the disappointment. I say disappointment. It's more the deflation and like, oh, what, you know, we could have got Europe it's what, after it's all a what of if, that. isn't it? And, yeah, it is. But We're also talking about, oh, it's going to be disappointment. It's going to be deflation. Imagine if in two weeks' time we are talking about that we have got into seventh because of these crazy results did well, happen. How, how do we think that's going to play out then? Because... Let's put it out. Four points for Villa, I think, is the sort of... I don't want to say maximum because we could get nine. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> six. If we get nine, we get we're nine. in great shape. <laughs> yeah. um, max, obviously, six. But I think four is like, okay, well, that's reasonable. Yeah. Then 
Tottenham basically need to get no more than three points because I don't think goal difference will better them on because we'll have to beat Brentford probably. Brighton. Brighton, of course. Sorry, two or three nil on the final day, maybe. Um, so it's the fact that Tottenham don't get more than three points. So what would that be? Beat, beat Brentford, lose to Leeds, draw both. That, that's what we need. Yeah. L- lose one, win one, or just draw both. Which that's not impossible. It's not impossible, no. Um, but then you can see a scenario where Villa lose to Liverpool and also don't beat Brighton on the final. So day. And, and in that case, it would be okay. Um, Tottenham would only have to. So we need Tottenham to draw both or get less than yeah. two points, which again. It's not inconceivable because Brentford have obviously got a bit. I don't know if they'll have Ivan Tony against Tottenham, but obviously they beat West Ham anyway. So yeah, it's interesting. I mean, yeah, it's just it's that Wolves game for me. That yeah. was the one. Yeah. There's loads. There'll be loads of things you could point back and go if we if we'd just done this and we'd just done that. And you know, Brentford will probably be saying the same. If they finish on 56 points, say they'll be going. Oh, if we'd have just done this, just done that. I just think we'd, that, we'd, that Wolves game would have put us in such a good position going into where we are now and who knows if we're already if on we 60 beat, points now you'd be buzzing wouldn't you yeah and I think that would I think we'd have enough then um, but that isn't how it's played out and let's just see what happens in the next two weeks there's going to be lots of twists and turns left you would have thought you know Brentford could go a goal up and everyone's thinking oh you know brilliant we play Liverpool next and then they could score two and win the game 2-1 and then we're deflated again so it's <laughs> also we're like our oh, four points it is probably a maximum in the sense that we're going to draw Liverpool and beat Brighton yeah. if you do beat Liverpool which again it is I think that it's, turns it's, it's on not its impossible head then. you'd then be going we're going to get six points here because if we beat Liverpool we'll beat Brighton yeah I, I I wouldn't doubt that and god I'm waiting for this to get clicked over but <laughs> I'm watching what I say but no yeah if we, if we beat Liverpool that's a, that puts us in a huge position then because again, it doesn't matter what Spurs do to an extent Mm-hmm. but well, then Spurs could win both beat, of theirs and yeah. it comes down to goal difference yeah and I don't think we'd yeah. bet their goal difference but I think on the last day Leeds needing to beat Tottenham I don't think Tottenham will beat them whether they get a point or not but yeah let, let's see what happens I think as you say if we get four points no one can really complain too much can they it's yeah. kind of out of our hands in a way So yeah I think that's enough for this because we're just going to go round and round in circles you've got those four teams in front of you there Brighton currently sixth Spurs seventh Villa eighth Brentford ninth if you've got to reposition them to how you think it'll finish and a, and a points total for Villa how would you how would you assess those last two games now Brighton will get sixth or fifth if they get over Liverpool um, it's between us and the Spurs for seventh and I think we'll get it you think we'll get it yeah I do I just got a sneaky feeling still I don't think Spurs will beat I mean, obviously they can beat Brentford, but I've got a sneaky feeling that Brentford will get some in there. Their away record isn't actually as bad as what you might think. I know they get a lot of points, there, points at home, but I think there's only four or five teams in the division who have won more games away from home. So Brentford might not win away, away a lot, but they're going to be tough to break down for Tottenham. And obviously that's a Tottenham team who it's just going to be a cauldron of we want Levy out and negativity. So, And do they want Conference League football? Probably not. We obviously do. So we could lose, I think, to Liverpool and still get it by beating Brighton on the last day. Mm. The, I, I, I can see an event where it goes to the last day and we're checking our phones thinking, oh, what's the Leeds um, yeah. Tottenham score? And if we're in that position, then we'll see what will happen. Yeah. So, yeah, it's exciting either way. Yeah, and that's uh, and this, this, I like that we're still talking about this at this stage of the season. This conversation that could be dead and buried by five o'clock Saturday tea time. And if that's the case, that's the case but for now it's nice to still be in this conversation and yeah I'd love it if, love it if we can do it but it's a tough ask I think let us know in the comments though if you're watching along with this how do you see the last few fixtures going uh, leave a comment down below subscribe to Claret and Blue for more content as well and we'll see you for that big Liverpool game Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue and Aston Villa podcast if you enjoyed today's episode then please do let us know we love hearing your thoughts and comments we'll be back soon with another episode but until then up the Villa Up the Villa